In the real world, no one is likely to ask you to calculate the mean, make a box plot, or run a particular statistical test. The reality is that someone comes to you with raw data and questions. You then have to decide how to analyze the data and the statistical meaning of the results of that data, and then explain that to the person who brought you the data. This is an example from locally. Someone has gathered data. This is actually data from a few years back, fall 2006, when the local markets used to serve sakau, a drink made from the Piper Methysticum plant, in styrofoam cups. And cups were, you purchased a certain number of cups. And a customer would drink as many cups as they needed until they uh, were satisfied, had the uh, gained their sakaula feeling, and then they would uh, leave the market and go home. The, uh, thus, one wants to know where the fewest cups are being drink, uh, consumed, because that would actually be a sign of a stronger market. Less is more here. If, the, if a lot of cups are being consumed, that would be a sign of potentially uh, weaker Sakao being served. Stronger would be fewer. And these are four different markets that were active at that time. A market called Pubita, one called Nankap, Sangmas, and Rush Hour. Uh, four different markets. And so I bring you the, these were the tally sheets. This is actual data from the markets. They were very kind. They showed me their tally sheets. They kept, uh, each market kept track. Uh, I've deleted the names, of course, of the customers, but how many cups they drank so that they could pay at the end according to the number of cups they consumed. So this is actual data from the sheets themselves that were being used in the, uh, 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 those across a, a couple of evenings at these different markets. Tallies were usually kept on sheets of cardboard or paper or any kind of scratch that was laying around that the servers could mark on, hash, hash marks essentially. So we can see this is the A customer who consumed 8.5 cups. Um, the the point five was an, is an interesting notation, but they were they were using them. I'm not sure uh, why they were doing that, but they they were. They were marking half cups. People must were asking for just a half a cup. Uh, so that, that was marked in some of these sheets these half cups uh, and uh, you can see all the different numbers here well someone says gee which market should I go to uh, I can't really tell it's a pile of numbers a statistician's job is to turn the numbers into something that has some kind of meaning and certainly there's some different things a statistician might look at when I have something like this I know that I have four samples I've got four different markets. This is my variable name. It's an odd variable name, but those are my variable names. Probably one of the early things I would want to do is know, well, gee, is there any real difference here at all between these? So I'm going to tap there and come across here if I can. Grab it. Da, 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 da. There we go. I want to copy that. I'm going to stick that down over here, paste it over there. Uh, That'll give me a place to work. I'll try to get these guys a little bit. All right. And I usually leave a gap like this to separate the two. But probably one of the early things I'll, I'll want to do, just a basic statistic that's always useful, uh, is to see what the total number of customers were. I mean, that's one thing you could report right off the bat. You could say, well, this market has... Uh, maybe more customers in some other market. Well, let me see what the count size, well, it'll overshoot, but this function doesn't care so much. I want to come all the way down to here, because I'm going to use one function to gather the count. It won't matter, it won't count blank, so I'll be fine. Yeah, rush hour. So, there's the counts. Uh, go ahead and wait, sorry. Find it, autofill. And again, you could do this on your laptop by simply clicking here at the uh, Pubita 
and on the lower right corner there will be a little square you can drag across it's it's actually easier now I'm gonna lose track of what this is so I probably want to uh, see if I can insert a column to the right I might not be able to I probably have to just cut and paste it let me tap up here yeah, I can hide, I can resize, but I can't actually add a column. Let me try if I do that. Plus, looking for, insert one column left. There we go. A lot of what I want you to do is do just what I'm doing. Explore your app and learn what you can do. I wanted another marker here because I'm going to put in the statistics here. I, I want to mark what these are so I don't get confused later on. That's always a good idea. That's the count. Well, technically, it's the sample size. The sample size, which we use the letter N for. And again, so double tap that little black ground circle. Whoa, mess up, press undo. That's the undo at the top, that little left facing arrow's undo. You'll mess up sometimes, and that's okay. And we, about the next thing I'm going to look at is I'll, I'll go ahead and look at the mean, the average. That's the average function. Learned about that in chapter uh, 2.1. That's a real basic statistic that's pretty common to want to have. Let me grab that. Whoa, too far, too far. Well, it happens sometimes. Slow down a bit there. And All right. And again, I can uh, bring that across if I work on it. There's probably a nice shortcut here, double tapping or something. But if there isn't, <laughs> go down here, autofill. Now, these guys are a little too wide to see, and there's way too many decimals gonna make someone in the market very dizzy with all those decimals so let's play with this a at the top which will get me to some format stuff and I believe I can get down here and check on the cell formatting I can go ah, on number now I can get in here and uh, bring down the number of decimal places say to two which is a fine number for this particular data set might not always be the solution but that make, makes a difference. Now I can see that there's actually a difference in the averages, in the means. But that may be just some aspect of the spread in the data. Let me go up here for a minute. There's my average. I'm going to do, I'm going to get lazy. I'm going to select that. I'm going to copy that because I happen to need that over and over again. The standard deviation looks like it would be interesting to me. It tells me the average spread. This is section 2.3. That's a useful calculation to make. And actually, I don't need that or that. I need a V and that's that. Get a bit. I paste. Don't worry. It'll all come out. Don't worry. That guy could use some uh, autofill it. And then let's uh, play with the... Oh, there we go. Size text. Yeah, additional formatting text. Let's go to cell and tell it I want some numbers. Uh, scientific, I'm just curious to see what there are. All sorts, all right. Well, I just need basic two decimal number. All right, so I can see that there's differences too in the standard deviation and in the mean, both. They both have some differences. So that's a beginning. That gets me a look at it. That suggests that perhaps there's a... Uh, a smaller, uh, a, uh, a smaller spread at Pobita. Uh, the, the number of cups is closer to the mean. Uh, 1.69 is the spread. On average, people are one point, within 1.69 cups of the mean of 2.62 cups. Uh, non cop a little bit more spread. Song mass is slightly larger spread. And a large spread at rush hour, a good spread at rush hour. A three cup spread. But that's the beginning, a sort of, of that's some basic statistics. That suggests that Pubita is probably a better market in the sense that people are drinking on average fewer cups than, say, rush hour. On average, they're having to consume five cups to get their Sakaula feeling, whereas at Pubita, they've consumed only two cups to get that same feeling. Now, there's some different things you could do to turn this into a to a useful chart. Uh, one chart that you could do here, let's uh, call that the statistics up there. Let's just mark them as statistics. Remind ourselves what they are. And that one can be formatted. There we go. And so I'm going to uh, 
I'm going to actually take um, this piece here though come across again I'm going to copy you'll see where I'm going in a moment I'm going to paste here and here I'm going to say equals you'll see where I'm going to in a moment equals the mean the mean is a real basic number and I can whoop, yeah try it again yeah. there we go I tap it and autofill across you tap and get that menu and then select what you want from the menu I've put Pubita right next to the mean because what I want to be able to do is I want to grab those and I want to see if I can make a chart of this I should have four markets I do that's good this one's come out with my four markets and now I can see the average and, and this tells a nice story I don't need the legend there is no legend nothing to say there so I'll just delete that and uh, let's go back to the blue geez you know that's I don't have any custom colors that's a reddish blue oh that's better oh even better something closer to the color of Saco that's not actually it but those are kind of light uh, so I'll leave it a little dark and I got labels in the bottom. I suppose I should probably have a uh, title on the left vertical axis to tell the reader what they're looking at. This is the, of course, it's a average number of cups. So that would be a good chart. That would be a good chart to use. It'd be that one there a little large but uh, you get the idea I could always uh, shrink it down some to fit better on my particular screen I'm using but that tells a nice visual picture that Pubita the average is the smallest and rush hour the average is the largest a sort of reverse Pareto chart if you will so that's beginning to extract some meaning before I just had a pile of numbers and I had no idea what story those numbers tell now I've got an idea of what those numbers tell. There's some other things I could certainly do from here. I could, it would take four different charts, but I could also do a histogram chart. It's guessed that I want a histogram chart, so that's good. I do not need a legend on this chart. This would be another perfectly fine analysis to do. This is the histogram for Pubita. Let me move that around. That's an interesting chart. That's interesting because it says most of the drinkers are drinking down a few cups. There's only a few that are in that upper end. So they're an unusual kind of drinker. Non-cup. You do have to do the histograms really um, chart by chart like this. Uh, column by column, sorry. Column by column. It's really the only way to do this. Give this guy a legend. Uh, no, no legend needed. It says non-cop at the top. I should put on a left axis, but for expediency's sake, I'm going to go ahead and just knock these in. That's a very similar one. So we have a very similar pattern. There's a story there, too. Most people are drinking only a few cups. In fact, one could argue that they may be drinking too few cups to actually be getting the feeling. These people who are only drinking one cup. They're not getting the feeling off of one cup. Song Mas, that has a more normal distribution. By normal, I mean it's a heap. It has sort of a heap-like shape to it. Again, I'll turn off that guy. So that's a histogram for Song Mas. I'll drag that guy down here. Get that guy in. Move this up here. Do some a little bit of editing here. So that's a different looking chart, certainly. That guy there looks a little different. Uh, these guys, uh, Pobita and Nankap are skewed right. They have these long right tails. Song Mas uh, has a more heap-like distribution. It actually has a bit of a left tail to it. The other two haven't had that, so that's a little unusual. Take a look at Rush Hour D. The number of columns, I can't control those from the app. The number of columns is being controlled by the, uh, that's interesting, looks like an outlier in that particular data set. That's the rush hour histogram. Let's grab these guys and get them all lined up, with, get them to the size where we can see them all together. Uh, 
Well, that is interesting. Uh, uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get that away. So now I've got all four of them here. I can kind of see all four at once a little bit. And I can see that Rush Hour is also a right skewed distribution running from uh, one up to. There's just, that looks like an awful lot like an outlier. That one above 13.8. That seems really unusual. Somebody's consumed 13 cups. That's, that seems unusual. That could be an outlier. So you could do histograms because they tell a story too. One of the stories it's telling is that there are a significant number of people consuming on the order of one or maybe two cups. That means they're probably not getting the feeling. So what are they doing? They're going to, I would suggest, this is just my suggestion, the story that's being told with these low cup counts is those are people going for the socialization. They're going to talk, to chat, to catch up, share news, hear news. This is social sakao consumption. And then some of the people up at four, six, seven, eight, those people are in there for the feeling. So that means that the social aspects of a market may actually be important. Most people think that the only thing important about a market is that the sakao is strong. But this suggests that there's a significant number of drinkers who are going for the social experience. Now our data is telling us a story. Now we have a story we can tell. I think there's probably one other chart you could go after with data like this. Um, the data that we see here. Uh, I'm not sure we can do it, so let's try it just for... I'm going to pop a copy of the whole thing. And I'm going to switch over to the box plot tool. I'm over in the box plot tool. I'm going to go to data upload and see if I can paste this data in. I have to switch to tab at the bottom. It'll only work if it's tab separated. Let's see if that worked. There we go. There's my data. Looks clean. Looks good. So let's go see what that looks like. Data visualization. A box plot is a good place to go to get a first glance at. Ah, now we're talking. We've got some new information. First, we can see the medians, which are the dark lines in the middle, are going up. The medians are increasing from Pubita, Nankap, Songmas to Rush Hour. But see the little circles? Pubita has three outliers high. Those are unusually high number of cups being drunk. Nankap has one, and Rush Hour has two. Fairly extreme outliers, way out beyond the middle of the distribution. Keeping our scale in mind, you can see we're getting the same kind of information we had from the histogram. The medians that you see there... These medians, let me um, mark the medians. The medians, this median, this median, this median, this median. This is the median. This is, now what we have here is the 50% of the cups are less than the median. Or put it another way, 50% of the customers are below this median value. So we've got maybe 50% here, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%. These values that these are at are low cup counts. We're below 5 until we get to rush hour and we finally get up closer to 5. So that's very strange if you think about it from the point of view of a Sako drinker. These drinkers down here at the bottom, at the bottom of these histograms, these this bottom 25%, they're drinking one, maybe two cups. They are not getting the feeling, which is okay. But they must have come to market for a different reason. And that's what I was saying before. So the box plot is telling us a similar story. It's also telling us a story that there are some people who are consuming unusually large amounts of sake. That's of interest too. Why? That's less clear. These would be individual drinkers at, at levels high against the market. Now, notice that for a market like uh, rush hour, you've got twenty-five percent of the people out here in this area. That's that. That's just the top twenty-five percent. But for someone at Pubita, they could not. That would be an unusual amount to drink. So you have twenty-five percent of the drinkers out here, somewhere above. 
uh, whatever that value is there. Let me put a check on that. Oh, sorry, I'll go back to my, uh, put this away for a minute. You've got this quartile three up here for rush hour up at 6.5. So you've got 25% of the drinkers. One quarter of them are drinking between six and 10 uh, up there at rush hour. That would be highly unusual for a drinker at, uh, at Pulbica to be in that 6 to 10 range. Those would be unusual. That too tells a story, although it's a bit, bit, you have to know more about the topic in order to tell that story. You have to realize that that means that people at Pulbica, this Sakao must be stronger than rush hour because it's unusual to go into the 6 to 10 range at Pulbica. It's unusual to come up into this high end up here at Pubita. It's not unusual over here at rush hour. And this brings me to another key point. Whenever you're working with statistics, you have to know something about the system you're looking at. In this case, we're looking at, at these uh, Sakao markets, uh, Sakao cups. But you have to do some research. You have to get familiar with it because otherwise you can't tell the story of the data. So you need to know things like Sakao markets serve cups of Sakao and people tend to drink until they get the feeling and leave. But you also have to know that one to two cups probably isn't enough for a person to get the feeling, so they must be doing something else. You have to know the system. So for any data that you look at, the first thing you're going to want to do is go, what is the data? Where did it come from? You're going to want to know what's the level of measurement. All of these different things you're going to want to know and to understand in order to work with your data set. So looking back at original data, we can now tell a story. We can tell something about the means. We can see that they're different. We can run the histograms. We can see that they're different too. The histograms have a story to tell. There's no one right answer, in other words. Maybe you just want to report the means. You're going to have to do a bit of write-up somewhere, type in here and do some typing to explain the story. You're going to have to type. Spreadsheets aren't ideal. Later in the course, we'll use presentations, you know, slides, to present our tables and graphs. Those will be a better place to type discussions, conclusions, those sorts of things. But uh, you'll, that will be later in the course. We'll go to slides and presentations. For now, we'll, you'll just be submitting it as a, as a, a spreadsheet. Both this one and unlikely the next one uh, will probably also be done just as a spreadsheet. And then we'll move on to presenting them by moving charts and moving tables of data over to a slide presentation. We'll do that later on. So this is just an introduction to it. This is the hard stuff. There is no right way. You don't have to do everything you've seen here today when you're analyzing data. That doesn't, this wouldn't necessarily be the, something you have to do everything. Uh, the means are a good start. That would be a basic start. The histograms, informative. Start to really tell the story. Or you could do box plots. I wouldn't do box plots and histograms unless there's two different stories they tell. And they really don't tell two different stories in this case. But the data has a story to tell. And we can tell that story using statistics that we see here. Uh, and that that's the job of a statistician. And that's what you're doing. You're being a statistician. You're playing the game of statistics. You're using the tools you've learned to, to analyze things and to come up with some basic, to tell, well, to tell the story of the data. That's the way I put it. You're telling the story of the data. And this, for example, now has implications. The fact that low cup drinkers constitute a major part of a market suggests that maybe making the market nicer might actually attract more customers. One market tried actually having tablecloths and putting out uh, flowers on the tables. Some people laughed at that, but that market may have sensed what we're seeing in the data. Many people are coming just for the social experience. So they might respond to what we call ambiance in English. That's a big word that just means the environment, uh, the, the 
decor, the decoration, the feeling of being in it, the ambiance, the tablecloths, maybe some flowers on the table. Who knows, maybe even a candle or two. That might be going a little too far. But that might matter with so many people coming for just the social side of the experience. Everybody says they only go for the feeling, but our data says otherwise. So that's a look at exploring data. And always remember, there isn't one, you know, well, what should I do now? I don't know. You explore, you play, you think about the things you've studied and go after some of these things and figure out what, how they tell a story. That's how you explore data.